so as promised i am back again with the series of types of corrosion up till now in the videos i have covered dry corrosion wet corrosion and galvanic cell corrosion obviously i am going to cover this today as i promised in the last video so hi i am neha and today i am going to tell you about what do we understand by concentration cell corrosion now again i'll go with the word that the word is cell and when it is cell then you need to identify that which one is a anodic portion and then which one is a cathodic portion and obviously the presence of electrolyte is essential now here what does happen is uh, there is a development of concentration cell in the last video i told you about galvanic cell where uh, what happened was uh, two dissimilar metals was there and based on the galvanic series you decided that the active metal becomes anode now you think if the metals are not different in fact they are same then what will happen if the same metal is there do it is still corrode is there any chances of being uh, you know corroded because you said that you are not using two dissimilar metals that means you use single metal but the single metal does not get corroded is there any guarantee i'll say no why because this is the most common type of corrosion what happens here also is that the metal surface will be exposed to the electrolyte and there will be development of the cell based on if there is a varying concentration of metal ion or varying concentration of oxygen what do you understand metal ion concentration cell corrosion means that the anode and cathode area are developed due to different excess of metal ion while in oxygen concentration cell corrosion the cell has developed due to different concentration of oxygen to it some area might have good oxygen some area might have poor oxygen and due to which the same metal develop a concentration cell so basically how to remember it is a concentration cell when there is a difference in the concentration of either metal ion or oxygen the cell can be developed right now how to identify that uh, which one uh, would be uh, the Uh, cathodic area and which one would be the anodic area right so corrosion always occurs at anodic area so you have to see the lack of particular thing lack of metal ion or lack of oxygen wherever there is lack of oxygen or lack of metal ion that area becomes anode and becomes corroded and the cathode obviously will be protected let me tell you some examples let us start with metal ion concentration cell corrosion now here as the name suggests there will be development of a cell and that too due to difference in the concentration of metal ion obviously the metal ion here metal would be the same now what happens is sometimes if you take the same metal let's say in this figure i have taken iron or maybe any rod is immersed in two different solutions like one is a dilute solution and one is a concentrated solution of the same metal ion let's say iron sulfate or iron chloride or some type of solution is there where iron is there so the same metal is exposed in the electrolyte while the area where there is dilute solution and it is dipped in the area where it is a concentrated solution so the same metal will develop a concentration cell the area which is in contact with the dilute solution will get corroded because there is less metal ion concentration now if you go with oxygen concentration cell corrosion as i said there will be difference in the air right that is why it is also known as differential erosion corrosion difference in the excess of air difference in the excess of oxygen specifically let's say one uh, metal let's say this is zinc rod right the zinc rod is dissolved is immersed in a particular solution maybe equal uh, electrolyte right so let's say nacl solution is there which is serving as an electrolyte now the same zinc rod is not having the same excess to oxygen half of the portion is dissolved is immersed in the electrolyte and half of the portion is not dissolved right so the same metal develops two different areas one area which is more oxygenated becomes cathode and one area which is less oxygenated becomes anode so this is how concentration cell is developed one condition same metal 
right? Second condition, not same environment. That is, environment becomes different. One is having good excess of oxygen, another one is having lack of oxygen. Now, what happens is, at that particular area where there is lack of oxygen, low oxygen, the reaction would always be oxidation. The material will be anodic and that's how it will corrode. So, whatever is that anodic portion, that will corrode. Cathode, the reaction remains same, right? If there is oxygen, it will form OH- and then overall corrosion product will be formed. So, one part of metal which is exposed to different air concentration from the other part, that is what oxygen concentration cell is all about. Uh, let me tell you in detail one more example. Let's say if this entire uh, thing is iron, right? But then somehow a drop of solution is uh, put over the iron place. Now, since a drop of salt solution or any solution is there, then you have an electrolyte portion available. So, one condition is met. Now, you have to see uh, the concentration difference. So, obviously, this uh, area of iron is in good excess of oxygen because it is in direct touch with the air. While this area is not in direct touch with the air, it is having poor excess of oxygen due to this uh, salt solution. Right, so this area will become anode and this area will become cathode, and the corrosion will start taking place from the anode, and then it will become localized because this area will become anode every time. So, the corrosion will happen here only. One time the product corrosion product will settle here, right? Second time also this will be anode, so more iron gets corroded here, and this way this corrosion becomes intense, and then the product will be settled somewhere between anode and cathode because the iron ion moves further it is fast in moving and wherever it goes out and it meets OH minus it will form iron hydroxide corrosion product. I guess you are able to understand this if yes please uh, mention in the comment uh, if any suggestions are there please uh, do that also I would love to hear your uh, comments and uh, would love to see your likes as well. Now, going further, corrosion accelerated in apparently inaccessible places. Uh, remember this, that oxygen concentration cell always occur when the oxygen concentration is lower. It increases corrosion, but at what portion which is having less oxygen concentration? If you make a diagram in a single language, simple, simple, let's say metal is there and you have some scale on it or you may have some sand particle on it. So, this area will become anode and this area will become cathode because it is in direct contact with the air. Simple, right? Let's say if you see the diagram, this is taken from the book Gen and Gen Engineering Chemistry. Now, if you see uh, here, uh, this is anodic portion. Why? Because then there is a corrosion product here accumulated. So, this area will not have access to oxygen while this area will have access to oxygen. Similarly, if you have a scale developed on the surface of metal, this area just below that will become less oxygenated and this becomes more oxygenated. Let's say some scent is there or some kind of material is there. So, basically I want uh, to let you know that accumulation of dust or sand etc. restrict the excess of oxygen and then establishes an anodic area. So, it promotes the localized corrosion. A corrosion will always occur in that localized area. It will always occur because that area will become less oxygenated or poor oxygenated. Now, let's say one more example. I have drawn this figure for you. Again, let's say the corrosion product is settled here. So, this area was earlier anode because of the sand or scale particle. But just because the corrosion product also gets settled here, this particular portion becomes anode. So, it will be the area of rapid attack. Again, the reaction remains same. Metal always oxidizes here, loses electron and oxygen always takes up electron forms OH minus. So, this localized attack will further intensify with time. And the corrosion products accumulate near a node, making it more inaccessible to oxygen. You might have seen that sometimes the metal exposed to aqueous media corrode under blocks of wood or pieces of glass, right? When there is wood and you, you know, uh, put a nail inside it. So, the portion which is inside wood that corrodes because of that only that in excess uh, lack of oxygen is there inside, outside there is oxygen. So, the same metal uh, gets corroded because that portion screens it from oxygen excess. So, you have to make sure that oxygen excess problem is not there. 
some more examples like metal part immersed in water called waterline corrosion i just uh, gave you one example of zinc rod i am going to discuss uh, this further in uh, coming videos what is waterline corrosion and all sometimes metal part partially buried in soil it is known as pipeline corrosion also like sometimes buried pipelines you know get corroded from one area well not from others why because when they pass out from the soil some soils are less aerated and some soils are more aerated so the portion which is less aerated that is poor access to oxygen that will corrode right likewise corrosion on wire fence when the fencing is done or wire mesh is there whenever you have you know these crossed portions wherever they cross wire mesh that area will get corroded now i guess you are able to understand why because this area where the wires cross will become anodic right because of the lack of excess of oxygen so differential erosion corrosion will occur sometimes crevice corrosion uh, is like that when there is crevice or a crack developed then that particular said let's say you have a nut and bolt here so there is a crevice developed that area does not get access to oxygen while the uh, nail get the access to oxygen so this portion will not corrode but this portion will corrode right pitting or localized corrosion i just told you that a pit is developed and that becomes intense and the entire metal gets corroded i'll discuss it in the coming videos for sure but this is part of uh, concentration cell corrosion and obviously the prevention lies in the cause only what is the cause the cause is the oxygen excess which is a problem right so what uh, you can do is uh, remove the oxygen from the solution so either you have a deaerator just deaerate the thing means by the help of temperature pressure adjustments or using degasifier and all if at all possible just expel the oxygen gas from the solution second option is even if you are not able to expel it out but you can deactivate the gas right how can you do that the oxygen you can you know force it to react with something let's say if you add sodium sulfide and if it reacts with oxygen it will form a soluble salt sodium sulfate let's say you have hydrazine and then it will react with oxygen and it will make a product so basically prevention is basically designed how it causes and i am going to discuss the prevention now of corrosion in detail in the coming videos also i guess that's all for today i hope you are able to understand what i'm trying to explain uh, please mention in the comments and hit like and obviously do subscribe for more such videos thank you so much